As the triumphant Miami Dolphins returned from Super Bowl VII, a throng of thousands gave a winner's welcome to the team, Coach Don Shula, and owner Joe Robert. This is the Vince Lombardi Trophy for the winner of the Super Bowl. Arrowhead Stadium was the scene of the opener. Don Shula had set a single goal for the new season, to get his team in the Super Bowl and win it. Beating the Chiefs in their new stadium would be the first step. The irony of opening in Kansas City was apparent to all, especially Don Shula. For this was a rematch of 1971's Christmas Day playoff in football's longest game. Yarrow Yepremian's field goal in sudden death over time had beaten the Chiefs and propelled the Dolphins into the Super Bowl. Now, as the Dolphins began the 72 schedule, all the psychological advantages belonged to the favored Chiefs. But Bob Greasy passed to an old target, Paul Warfield. And a new one. Marlon Briscoe to lead the offense to two touchdowns. Miami's famous no-name defense was superb. Stopping the Chiefs' running game, shutting off their big threat Otis Taylor, and harassing Len Dawson throughout the game. Miami's dominance was so complete they held Kansas City without a touchdown until only nine seconds remained. Miami had easily thwarted the revenge-minded Chiefs 20 to 10. The next Sunday in the home opener, Miami raced away from Houston in the rain. All four of Shula's backs Morris, Zonka, Greasy, and Kick scored touchdowns as the Dolphins won their second, 34-13. Then came the Vikings. From the opening kickoff, it was a bruising battle. On their very first series, Fran Tarkington burned Miami with the bomb and Minnesota led. But the Dolphin defense, led by Nick Bonaconte, number 85, kept Miami in the game by sacking Talkington five times and taking away the long pass by employing a fifth defensive back in Shula's nickel secondary. Garrow Upremian's long-range field goals of 38, 42, and 51 yards kept his team close, but Miami trailed with less than two minutes left. Then Bob Greasy, in a masterpiece of clutch passing, moved the Dolphins downfield. Miami's great come-from-behind victory was their third straight and left them the only undefeated team in pro football. The season's fourth Sunday was in New York's Shea Stadium, where the Dolphins completely stymied Joe Namath with their 53 defense. Bob Matheson, number 53, dropping back like a linebacker or rushing in like an end, frustrated Namath all day. Led by Bob Greasy, who enjoyed perfect protection, and Howard Twilley, who reclaimed his regular job from injured Marlon Briscoe, Miami won. Now, after only four games, the Dolphins already had a two-game edge in the AFC East. San Diego was next in the game that the Dolphins lost their leader for most of the season. 
A record Orange Bowl crowd of 80,000 watched in silence as Bob Greasy sat on the poly turf with a fractured leg. But Miami was well prepared. And as Bob Greasy was wheeled off the field on a stretcher, his successor, the last of the crew cuts, 38-year-old Earl Morrill took his place at the line of scrimmage. With the poise of the old pro that he is, Morrill soon had the Orange Bowl rocking with cheers as he completed eight of 10 and hit Paul Warfield and Howard Twilley for touchdown passes. The no-name defense got the team into the scoring column as well. When safety Dick Anderson went 35 yards with a charge of fumble, Miami had won its fifth straight to remain unbeaten. But the cost had been high. Game number six brought Buffalo, and with Greasy on the sidelines, the Dolphin defense took charge of the game. O.J. Simpson was held to 13 yards rushing in the first half. And in the second, Manny Fernandez stole a handoff and the ball game as Miami squeezed past the Bills by a single point. The following week in Baltimore, the Dolphins' attack opened up on the coast. But the specialty teams were the real stars, blocking two kicks and recovering a fumbled punt. The Colts never got within the Miami 28 as the team shut out Baltimore. The season's second half began with Miami still unbeaten. In Buffalo, the ground game rolled over the Bills. The decisive factor was the magic feat of Mercury Morris who stutter stepped through the mud in one of his most impressive performances as a pro. Miami had win number eight, 30 to 16. The next Sunday, Morris continued his great play, scoring three touchdowns against New England. The entire offense was awesome as Miami passed their opponents out of the Orange Bowl. The 52 to nothing pasting of the Patriots made Don Chula the first NFL coach with 100 victories in only 10 years. In game 10, Joe Namath's arm gave the Jets a 10 point lead. Then with New York on the brink of another score, defensive captain Nick Bonacante turned the tide and the Dolphins surged ahead. The mercurial Morris was turned loose, churning and cutting through the jet defense in a brilliant display of open field running. The win was Miami's 10th and wrapped up the Eastern Division title for the second straight year. 
On Monday night against St. Louis, Larry Zonka bulled his way for well over 100 yards for the fourth time this season. And a dazzling aerial show demonstrated Dolphin receiving depth. On defense, Miami capitalized on six Cardinal turnovers in a 31-10 romp over St. Louis. Next, in New England, Zonka's 45-yard burst earned him his second straight 1,000-yard season as the Dolphins established a team yardage record, rolling up over 500 against the Pats. The win streak had now reached an even dozen. In Yankee Stadium, a relaxed Alex Webster and his Giants were determined to break the Miami streak. Shula's team was bucking the law of averages and a hostile crowd of 63,000 who would have enjoyed nothing more than to witness a Dolphin defeat in the big town. But Jim Kick, averaging 11 yards each time he got the ball, put on a brutal display of power running. And great catches by Angel Paul Warfield decimated the giant secondary as Miami won with room to spare. The Dolphins were now only one game away from the NFL's first perfect 14-game season. The regular schedule's finale brought Baltimore and a moral to Warfield collaboration for another sensational touchdown. Warfield's touchdown and Garo Upremian's field goals of 35, 40, and 50 yards accounted for all the Miami scoring. It was in this game that the Dolphin ground attack broke a 36-year-old record to become the greatest rushing team in NFL history and the first to have two 1,000-yard runners on the same squad. The no-names were again superb, completely shutting off Marty Dombries and John Unitas for Miami's third consecutive shutout over Baltimore. But most important, the 16 to nothing win was Miami's 14th straight and gave the team an achievement unequaled in the history of the NFL, a perfect 14 game season. Shula and assistants Arnsparger, Clark, Keen, Gary, and Tassif coached a team that ranked number one in offense and defense in the NFL. Their perfect season was even more impressive because they accomplished it without their regular quarterback. However, Earl Morrow succeeded Greasy as leading passer in the conference and was named All-Pro. As good as Morrow was, no one can completely replace a Bob Greasy, whose strong arm and quick feet run enemy defenses ragged. The Dolphins' rushing record was nothing less than a personal tribute to Miami's fine offensive line of Jim Langer, Norm Evans, Doug Crusan, Wayne Moore, and Bob Kuchenberg. Their leader was all-pro Larry Little, number 66, a human side, famous for cutting down cornerbacks. For the second straight season, Little was voted best offensive lineman in the American Conference. Shula's concept of a three-back offense brought a new dimension to the Miami attack. With Zonka's power, Kick's clutch, and the specter of Mercury's speed, they were the most prolific infantry in the annals of the pro game. 
They were also teammates in the truest sense, making the key block and cheering the others from the sideline. In the playoff with Cleveland, the Miami specialty team blocked a punt for a touchdown, and the Dolphins took an early lead. But the Browns came back to go ahead with slightly over eight minutes left to play. Here, Miami showed why it was unbeaten. Earl Morrill and Paul Warfield combined to deliver the death knell. And a determined gym kick behind devastating blocking finished the 80-yard clutch drive in the Cleveland end zone. The Dolphins in a pressure-packed performance had come from behind to win. And Miami's inexorable march through the season continued. Next was Pittsburgh in the AFC Championship game, among the sign-carrying zealots in bedsheet bedecked Three River Stadium. On their very first series, the Steelers scored and took the lead. Time after time, Pittsburgh steel curtain defense stopped Miami. Then on a fourth and five situation came the most important play of the game and perhaps the entire season for the Dolphins. With Steelers seemingly running interference for him, punter Larry Seiple's risky fourth down gamble succeeded, and Miami was on its way. To take advantage of Seiple's great effort, the coach of the year made a difficult decision. To get the offense untracked, Shula replaced Earl Morrill with Bob Greasy. The results were not long in coming. On his first pass of the playoffs, the gifted Greasy split the Steeler defense with a pass that Paul Warfield took for 52 yards. Several plays later, Greasy pitched to Jim Kick, the money performer without peer, who scored the go-ahead touchdown. It was one of four that Kick would score in the three postseason games. Miami had its 16th straight and repeated as conference champions. For them, it was on to the Super Bowl. For Crestfall and Steeler Rooters, the banners came down for good. The Dolphins had ended their great season. For the Miami Dolphins, the Super Bowl was an entire season in one game. They were not about to lose it. Bob Greasy hit on six of six passes in the first half and threw to Howard Twilley for the game's first score. The rest of the Super Bowl served as a showcase for the Dolphins' variety of talents.
The Dolphin defense was the real story of this game, stopping Larry Brown Cole. Jake Scott was named most valuable player for his two interceptions. And Manny Fernandez had the kind of a day a defensive lineman dreams about, as the no-name defense completely controlled the game. So playing an almost perfect football game in a perfect season, the Miami Dolphins were world champions. Only seven years since Joe Robbie was granted a franchise in the old AFL, Miami not only won the Super Bowl, but had gone an entire season undefeated. A feat no other NFL team in history has accomplished. It is unlikely ever to happen again.